one of the technologies I used to use in the past was a thing called Yahoo Pipes. Now, for anybody who's used it before, um, you'll probably remember how useful it was when RSS feeds were a thing. Uh, they're much less of a thing now. Uh, they still exist on certain websites, but uh, they would allow you to get a feed of content uh, from a website and, um, and get a notification in your RSS reader app um, and essentially read that content in the RSS reader. Um, Yahoo Pipes was useful because it allowed you to mash up or combine uh, multiple RSS feeds from maybe other sites and stick them all together or the same site um, in different areas and then um, either as we see in this example they kind of stick them together using a union operation uh, and then some of them maybe the output of that is then filtered um, so I found all that really useful for gathering uh, the information I wanted from various sites and then you end up with your own RSS feed uh, from that um, that pipe um, and it's all being filtered and uh, made into the thing that you want so I've, I found that really good at the time but like I say um, they uh, shut this service back in 2015 um, they created it back in 2007 uh, I'm not sure when I discovered it and started using it but I felt a bit of a gap when uh, that was shut in 2015 now one alternative these days uh, that I've found uh, very useful and actually is more modern to Yahoo Pipes was very much geared towards getting XML out of these RSS feeds and, uh, and then filtering those I'm finding that actually the Microsoft technology uh, in Azure called Logic Apps is a lot better than this. Uh, it will do a lot more, um, but still give you this ability. So if we switch over to an example feed, let's go to an easy one. So this one takes uh, RSS feeds from this website. So let's say that we wanted to combine this feed um, so we would take this URL here, copy it. I would want to combine it maybe with the TV releases. So I'd go and get that feed URL. Now to stick those together is actually quite simple. So in our logic app here, uh, we're going to use a trigger. Um, so back in the day, we would uh, be triggering this by simply calling the pipe, uh, the Yahoo pipe. Um, but in this case, we'll use a recurrence trigger. So this is a let's run it every, say, three days, or you can change this to minutes or hours. Um, so maybe you just want to run this daily at a particular time in the day to go and scrape that information together. And then we've got a call here. So this block will go and get the feed from the site. So this, that's the RSS feed. And it will bring it back use more usefully in JSON. So it's a bit more modern. Uh, we can do more with that. And it's more, well, Logic Apps like working with JSON a lot more with than with uh, XML. So we've got, we can run these in parallel or sequentially um, just by moving them underneath each other, or we can add another one. So we could add another parallel branch off to the side and then choose another action. So we can look in the uh, list of action blocks here, choose RSS again and then paste in the feed URL for another feed. Let's remove that one, keep it simple. So with those two going off to get their RSS feeds, we then get into this JS code block. Now, what I wanted to do here was combine the two and I couldn't find an action block in uh, Logic Apps which would go and do that. So what I did was write a small bit of JavaScript code in here and this runs Node.js um, in a container somewhere. So we're just setting variable R1 and R2 to the output body of this one and this one. And then I'm using this uh, note uh, this notation here, the spread notation, to push the contents of R2 into R1 so that it adds them together, essentially, and then returns it. Then what we can do is do things like your filtering. So um, we can go through the body of the result of this and look for where title contains something. And you can do much more advanced 
filtering. So you could do, this is how you would do an OR. So you can say if it contains 1080 or 720p, then let it through and save that. Now if you run this, So this is run it without that recurrence trigger. We kind of trigger it manually just to see what happens. So you can inspect these and just check whether it's working. So we've got the uh, the results here from the RSS feed. And you can see it's converted that into JSON. And you can check the other one. And then when this code runs, it then applies the, uh, sticks the two together. So we've got these releases here then when we scroll to the bottom and we're in TV shows oops TV shows so it's stuck the two arrays together and then we've applied filtering to it which would probably give us everything really um, but the filtering that you can apply here can do whatever you want you can look at published dates or titles or whatever you need so depending on the site that you're sticking these together from it depend on what filters you want to use so this was um, catering for that scenario where you would want to join feeds together and then filter uh, you could potentially then take the output of this and do something with it um, in one of, one of mine i've got it to email me with the uh, releases in a day um, you can trigger something else you can pass these into another logic app or send it to twitter or there's many, many integrations out of the box that this does that Yahoo Pipes never did. So you can do a lot more with this. So in this other feed, let's have a look at this one. So in this Logic app, I'm going to go and get a bunch of other releases from this other web service. I can't expand this because it's got an API key in it. Um, it then processes that um, and you've applied a JSON schema against it. So it is aware of the structure of that feed. And then we're doing a select operation. So this goes through each of those items in the feed and pulls out, we're just interested in publish date and we're only interested in the title, but you can see though that we're uh, replacing all of the dots with spaces as we do that. So you end up getting a much more compact feed of published dates and titles. Then we convert that back into JSON. And then we apply a filter, which is kind of what you just saw in the other uh, logic app that I developed uh, using the filter. And then I do some more complex filtering. So I did want to do some regex in here and title matching to, to dedupe the uh, the list. And um, what else did I do? I bolted on the publish day, so I get the, uh, the day of the month and so on. So it's a bit more complex and I could merge that into here, uh, but I kept it separate just for an example. Um, so this is useful, like I say, it runs Node.js. Um, so you can prototype your code elsewhere and then paste it into here. And that kind of makes it easier to work with. And then in here, I am generating some HTML, which we'll use in an email body. So it takes that uh, list, uh, the array that we've got as a list, and then generates HTML for each item. And then at the end puts a kind of like a footer at the end of the page. And then it sends me an email with that. Um, on the schedule. So as you can see, this is really quite useful um, and contains a lot more to it than uh, Yahoo Pipes did. So if you're interested in doing things that you used to do in Yahoo Pipes, I would certainly recommend you take a look at this. Um, now this is a um, sort of a playground instance of Azure. You can do this stuff um, easily and cheaply with Azure 
on your credit card. You can sign up for like a, a 30 day trial, which will give you $200 worth of credit. Uh, you'll need nowhere near that for this type of thing. If you're just doing a few runs of this per day, uh, that's pennies. Um, so you, you really don't need a lot of money to, to run this stuff. Uh, it may be that your organization has this kind of thing already. So it's worth checking, see whether you can uh, run this on your account. Um, there's also a sort of more personal version called, um, what's it called now? They used to call it Flow and I think it's called something like Automate. I will find out and let you know in the, uh, in the notes in the description of this video. Um, but if you've got that, then you can run a lot of this through there uh, and link it into your own Gmail account or whatever. So give it a try if you're missing Yahoo Pipe still. And if you've got another recommendation for something that is very similar, uh, please let me know. I haven't seen anything in AWS that does this type of thing where you're building it with blocks, um, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Um, but if you do some, use something similar, I'll be uh, really interested to know. So let me know in the comments. Thanks very much for watching.